when the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea was first formed, uh, it was known generally but vaguely that there were prison camps of some sort or another in North Korea. It was widely thought that concentration camps or forced labor camps uh, or political prison camps were a phenomena that was associated with the terrible human destructions in the 20th century. It was known vaguely and generally uh, that there were prison camps of some sort uh, in North Korea because the Korea scholars had tried to document the uh, Kim Il-sung's purge of the party and the army and the government and the general populace of Korea. Uh, but it, the, there was a consensus certainly in human rights and much broader circles that these kinds of gross uh, human rights violations is something that should have passed from the scene at the end of World War II, certainly by the end of the 20th century. The reason that it's important to do periodic updates uh, is because we're in the odd situation of only being able to find out about human rights violations in North Korea uh, between two and five years after the violations occur. And I interviewed three uh, women prisoners from the jungle we kill also, kill also number 12. Uh, and what was, what was most interesting uh, was the senselessness and the perniciousness of punishing these women for having gone to China in search of food because of the chronic food shortage. This is not your run-of-the-mill uh, prisons. Uh, people are being persecuted, subjected to forced labor uh, uh, under extremely brutal conditions for having exercised their rights. Uh, they are being they're being detained arbitrarily, uh, and uh, their detention uh, constitutes crimes against humanity. Uh, these are worst case violations. They shouldn't be occurring in the 21st century. And uh, the only recourse available uh, is to try to mobilize international public opinion.